So there's a lot of money to be made these days, especially online and on YouTube in particular. By not being online, you're potentially missing out on a great deal. There are people that are making so much money, it's unbelievable. Today, we're going to speak about this 28 year old who brought in almost a million dollars last year from YouTube. I aspire to be like her. Actually, if there was anyone in America that I'd like to collab with, it would be her because I think our styles are very similar. Her videos are not only entertaining, but they're very educational and informative. And that's what I usually strive for. She's pretty cool. Her name is Shelby Church. Let's learn from her to see some of the do's and the don'ts and really deep dive and see the behind the scenes of her process. If you haven't already subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button and let's get into this reaction video. I got my first paycheck, Google AdSense paycheck, when I was about 14 for $500. $500. And she says Google. Google is the owner of YouTube, so it's the same thing. So she got $500 at 14 years old. She's now 28, so she's doubled the age. So, you know, more than doubled the income. But $500, I remember my first paycheck was, I think it was 170 something US dollars. And that's while I was living in Jamaica. And yes, I got it in my Jamaican bank account. For those of you that always ask how we receive money in Jamaica. It's the same way that it's received anywhere else in the world. But hers was 500, man was 170 something. And she was 14. Man was only three years ago. Yeah interesting let's move on i never imagined that youtube would become as lucrative of a career as it has for so many people 2022 was definitely my best and busiest year i've ever had with youtube my name is shelby church i'm 28 living in seattle see it says 28 she's made 981 thousand dollars a year living in seattle 2022 was a great year for her. That's amazing. 2022 was also a great year for me. It's the year of many changes and also trying out different things. So maybe one day I'll do one of these kind of videos and, you know, be all transparent and whatnot. But in the meantime, let's learn from Shelby. On average, I would say the last three years I've made somewhere between three to $500,000 a year. But 2022 was something else entirely. Three to $500,000 a year. Okay, let's do some math. 300,000 divided by 12 would give her $25,000 a month on average, right? Very doable. And I'd say, I know that for her videos right now, every video or every other video is sponsored. So even if she doesn't make the money from YouTube AdSense itself, she's also getting money from sponsorships, which is great, which is what you want to do as a YouTuber. You want to be able to diversify your income stream so that you're not just relying on income from one source. And I've talked about that so many times about the different potential sources of revenue as a YouTuber, an influencer, content creator, whatever you want to call it. And she has definitely tapped into a lot of those, but 25K a month is a decent change. Let's continue. That was my busiest year. It was really stressful. I made $981,000 in 2022. It just sounds crazy to say that. If we look here, you see where it says she produced 30 main channel videos and partnered with 15 different brands. There we go. Partnering with the 15 different brands is the sponsorship. So those brands would also pay her monthly or whatever the agreed timeline is, as well as 30 videos. Yeah, 30 videos for the year. How many videos did I do last year? I don't even know. She didn't even post that much last year and she's been able to make almost a milli from doing the videos. Sponsorship must have been a really big chunk. That's amazing. I made $981,000 in 2022. It just sounds crazy to say that. So $980,000 in 2022. And here we see where it says pre-tax. So I'm assuming that after tax and expenses, it may be about half that or a little over half of that. Because um, tax does eat up 
a good chunk of it but it's still amazing to be able to make so much you know that was a goal for me was to make a million dollars in a year before taxes and business expenses so it's really like half that so i do have to pay taxes on that money like i said and business expenses like tax preparation hiring that videographer that was you know a significant amount i think it was about thirty thousand dollars so let's backtrack a little bit here it says shelby spends twenty eight thousand dollars on part-time freelance videographer i know she does her production herself mostly but when she does hire out videographers that's twenty eight thousand dollars for the entire year and if we're gonna do that by month that's a little over two thousand dollars a month on videographer okay i can see that happening okay her videos are like more documentary style videos getting a lot of interview type videos and b-rolls and stuff like that so i do understand there's a lot that goes into her videos if you watch her so i could see why it would charge so much and especially if they're moving about because she does move around a lot so if the videographer is moving around with her i'm sure that's another expense but if you're making nine hundred thousand dollars what's twenty eight thousand dollars of it right and then here we see where it says her income after tax she makes five hundred and eight thousand dollars and 22 taxes are not totally done this is just my rough estimate based on expenses but it's still good to be able to make so much taxes are dragged because imagine almost half of it is gone in taxes i mean and business expense but whatever it's actually interesting to see this it's easy to look at youtubers and think that it's not work because it's fun to watch a video but it is a lot of work actually creating videos especially the more documentary style ones where you're going and interviewing people it's it's work and a lot of times i'm wearing multiple hats i'm doing the sound i'm setting up tripods and i'm the interviewer like yeah a lot of people tend to think that you know it's nothing they just have the camera and that's it and what they're doing is not a lot but it is actually a lot actually because to get to the video for you guys to get this video there's a lot that happened behind the scenes in the back for it to get to the stage that you can see there's the planning and preparation how am i going to create that video and what will i need to create the video and then where will i need to go do i need to include this person or do i need to go to a particular location to do the video the lighting and the sound and all of that and then when you do have the video the editing because doing the video is one thing but if it's not properly edited then it's not going to convey the message that you want it to convey or meet the objective that you want it to meet there's like a whole lot that goes into the videos and hats off to those that are doing it themselves those that are able to hire it out that's also great but it's a whole lot especially if you're trying to produce quality content if you're not trying to do like mediocre type content and when i say mediocre i don't i'm not talking about a content type i'm speaking about the content quality you know what i mean so there's a lot that goes into it so guys when we ask you to subscribe or like or comment or whatever just please do it because it's a way that you show your appreciation to us for bringing you the videos that you want to see it's a lot it's really a lot and it's rewarding too i think part of the reason that i make a good amount is because i'm doing like three or four jobs in one if i were to hire out all these things i wouldn't make nearly as much like i could hire an editor a sound person a videographer for every video but i find that i can do it myself just fine i actually kind of prefer that a lot of the time I work with videographers from time to time, but right now with there being more of a recession, I haven't been, honestly. Yeah, so when you have to do everything yourself, it does take a lot more time. It's a lot more taxing. There are benefits to doing yourself because then you have control over the production. You have the final say, or at least you get to guide the process along. If you hire it out, there are benefits to doing that as well because that frees you up of the time so that you can go and start to create more content. When I was 18, I was living off of YouTube. I was making like $30,000 a year. When she was 18, she was making $30,000 a year. I wish I started YouTube at 18. I would have been, I would have been great right now. 
Like I started too late. I mean, I'm happy for my journey because everybody's journey is different. But I wish I had actually started a lot earlier because then I would have been a lot further along. But I'm grateful for where we are. And we're doing it. And we're doing it. I would do with net one by one. By the time I was 21, I made like around $100,000 a year. See what I mean? By she's 21, she made $100,000. If she can do it... So could I if I did it. And if she can do it, so can you. So now is the time to go and start. There were years that it was a little less, a little more. It ebbs and flows. That is just like the nature of owning your own business. So that's the thing with YouTube. There's no one set income. It's not like, you know, you have a nine to five and you go and they say, oh, your salary is $50,000 for the year or $100,000 or whatever it is. There's no one set thing because there's so many different factors that play into how you get paid. You get paid monthly through AdSense, but again, if you're not only relying on AdSense to be your only source of income, then you have the sponsorships, there's affiliate marketing, there's products, there's digital products, there's all these other things that you can tap into to make money and it's going to differ every month so you know it is it fluctuates which is a good problem to have by the way it really is so different what i spend each month if i'm traveling and producing a lot of videos that month it's going to be a lot more my rent here i pay two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars every month for my share of this apartment so i do share it with my sister so she can film in here and she has a room that she can like set up as an office so she pays two thousand seven fifty for half the rent so the total rent is fifty five hundred dollars that's quite a bit i think it's a two-bedroom house that she has and i think that's quite a bit but then again i don't know her market i know she's in seattle which is significantly cheaper than california because she was previously in california and that's the rent if we look more closely we see where utilities is 40 dollars now that's cheap i'm assuming that a lot of the utilities are probably wound up in the rent cost like maybe her rent includes water and light i don't know and she perhaps just paying 40 dollars for gas i don't really know but i would assume so we look more closely we see travel three thousand dollars plus okay she does travel a lot to do her videos but then i'd assume that she'd write this off as a business expense the traveling so that may maybe onto something her wi-fi is 70 dollars okay that sounds standard for wi-fi airbnb 546 dollars i know she does travel and i'm assuming if she travels i guess she needs somewhere to stay so 500 dollars it means that okay she's not staying at a lot of airbnb at that cost then because that also looks standard she has 800 dollars and food that's a lot for food but then it all depends because if it's 800 dollars and all grocery for just her and then her sister uses the apartment occasionally so it's just 800 for one person and that's definitely a lot but if it's a mixture of grocery and then eating out a lot then that makes more sense for it to be 800 dollars so that's pretty interesting and then she has random stuff at 600 dollars that's miscellaneous i guess clothes a little bit of shopping here there makeup here there there and then 50 dollars for subscription her car insurance for 142 health insurance is a pretty steep 385 dollars wow so her total monthly expenses is eight thousand three hundred and ninety five dollars and that's for one person i know people family of four that's living off less than this but hey if you can afford to why not huh well this is this is pretty interesting pretty interesting breakdown the utilities are only like 40 dollars a month here my car is paid off so i have no monthly payment i even charge it for free because i i've referred so many people people from my tesla video i've been contemplating as you guys know if i should get a tesla or not i did a video showing you guys like my experience looking for a car there are a couple that i really like and that includes the tesla because you know of the tech features and it's pretty quick it's a little bit scary the fact that they can control the cars from their offices but i'm also concerned about charging stations i know i've seen a lot of charging stations around the place but is it gonna be enough for when i do go on road trips i don't know so i'm still thinking about it she said that she doesn't pay for charging because she has 
refer so many people. So guys, if I do get the Tesla and I refer you, please take up the offer so that I don't have to pay for charging as well. <laughs> but let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think I should get a Tesla? Tell me the pros and the cons of getting a Tesla in the comments below. I spend a lot on food. It's probably like $800 to $1,000 a month. I like going to dinner with people and getting a drink and I'm gonna live my life. Like food is something I am, I love spending money on, to be honest. I love going out to eat, it's so fun. See, um, like I said, if she's going out, you know, as well as eating in, then I can understand the $800. If it was just $800 on just grocery for her alone, then that would be a bit much, but I can see where eating out will get expensive because outside, it's expensive. <laughs> Travel is something I spend a lot on because my video ideas just take me all over America. I try and use credit card points for my flights, but hotels are expensive. And over the summer, I had my videographer travel with me. So I was paying for her flight and her hotel and food and everything there. Yeah, so travel does add up and I do get it. As you guys know, I'm usually traveling around doing different videos and yes, it does add up going to these different places. And that's why it's good to have sponsors for those videos so that you can balance the books at that point. Or if you're doing travel, if you're doing traveling like I was at when I was doing the Airbnb series, I didn't pay for any of those Airbnbs because those were a part of the agreement for filming the Airbnb. So the different ways where you can make it work and minimize the expenses, it's all, it all depends on what it is that you're looking for out of the video and what the arrangement is, you know. But she's traveling, going to hotels, renting cars and all of that. It does add up definitely does add up so i mean there were months where i was spending like eight to ten thousand dollars on travel i'm not spending that much on travel right now i've really scaled things back eight to ten thousand dollars a month on travel i've definitely never spent so much traveling for a video before who knows what may happen in the future depending on the video i know mr b spends so much money traveling for his videos or putting a production together for his videos so it it all depends on what the future happens but for now that's a bit much but if you're making it and it's going to bring in a good return then why not you know it all depends on the roi really if it if it's worth it i'll do it but for now because i'm not doing it i can just say that mm, you know it's a bit much but she's paying for her videographer to also travel that person's hotels and food and whatnot so i get it so i do have an airbnb if you followed along you know it hasn't been the most profitable investment we didn't quite break even because we had more maintenance than expected i used to think an airbnb would be like a no-brainer so profitable and the truth is it's harder for to make them profitable than you would expect especially now so i know that she has an airbnb and she's done several videos on the airbnb um, and she has been honest about the fact that it's not making her any money. And she's been honest about, you know, where she's going wrong, what she's going. So I love her transparency for that. Like kudos to you, girl, because it does help other people that are looking to go into it. One thing I'll say is that I know that she she's been doing a lot of the videos like I did where she checks out unique tiny Airbnbs and stuff like that. So I've always wondered like why did she opt to buy a traditional house for Airbnb and not a unique type house? Because from what I see, the houses that have a unique feature um, where it's selling the experience rather than the house itself, it seems to do a lot better on Airbnb than a traditional house. Like people are moving around not to stay in a in another house that reminds them of their house these days they're staying at places where they can get a different experience so like from doing these videos i see where people are looking at the container houses and the houses in the tree and the dome houses and the little thing on top of the mountain and you know all these different cool house inside of a train inside of a caboose things like that as opposed to just a regular brick and mortar house for airbnb i have friends that have brick and mortar and airbnb here and they're not doing too well but my friends who have those other unique type of houses they have a totally different stories and plus the people i've worked for doing this have a totally different story so i've always wondered is it that she bought this house 
before starting to do those videos and doing the research on what's selling or she just went with it anyways and then again things change and the market changes every time so i don't know if maybe there was a time where that was a thing and that's when she got into it i know it's just not in but i don't know it's down for her but we know it's gonna get back up girl so just keep doing your thing i do think that eventually i'll be able to break even on that property i'm getting solar panels the housing market is just a mess right now overall so i know it's not as profitable as she'd like it to be it's probably not profitable at all no matter what it is everything is just a mess so she's gonna have to just take her time and slowly ease back into it. I still think it's gonna work out in the long term, but the first year wasn't that profitable. It was not. It wasn't profitable. So yeah, it's not profitable now, but the good thing is that she has diversified her income stream. So Airbnb is not doing well right now, but YouTube is doing a whole lot better. And that's the importance of having money coming from different sources so that when one is down, you can look to the others, which she has done successfully. So I hope you guys learned something from this. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Are you intrigued or no interested or persuaded to start a YouTube channel? Because if you weren't before, you should be right now. You see what the potential is? And she's just got me so pumped up to keep pushing and to keep moving because we're going to get to where we want to get to, right, as long as we keep working at it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Be sure to like this video, press the subscribe button and subscribe to this family if you haven't done so already. What are you waiting on? <laughs> and I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, 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 so much. I'll see you in the next one. Russian, Russian, Russian with the vlogging. Russian, 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 a good thinking. Like, share, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Watch every video, member says she not hype. Like, share, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Watch every video, member says she not hype. Hey, mm -hmm. it's Russian. Share and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause she not boring.